So as you all know, CNN had pretty much a climate change marathon. They had back to back to back to back town halls between 5 p.m. to midnight, I want to say. And let me just say this to see a mainstream cable news outlet dedicate that much time to climate change, it's commendable. Now, of course, they're doing this for ratings because, you know, if you can bring on presidential candidates, this is going to draw eyeballs to the screen. But nonetheless, I'll take what I can get. If you're going to talk about climate change for half of the day, that's good. The entire country and planet may be better off because of it. So, of course, you know, multiple candidates talked about climate change. Bernie Sanders expectedly killed it. But there were some candidates who, even though I think overall they did good, you'd expect them to maybe do a little bit better and know better, more specifically with regard to certain aspects of very popular proposals that are intended to combat climate change. For example, Andrew Yang, thankfully said he likes the Green New Deal. In fact, he loves the Green New Deal. Although he claimed that something about the Green New Deal was true, when in fact, it is not true, and this is a lie spread by the right-wing media. Take a look. I love the vision of the Green New Deal. Uh, the, the framers of it have done us all a great service by, by energizing so many people around a vision. And to me, the only issue I have with the Green New Deal is the timing of the timeline. I mean, they are right that we need to take urgent action, but the timeline that they put out there would do away with commercial air travel and a lot of other things in a particular time frame. that if we have a little bit more time, we can head in the same direction and... Uh... Big yikes. One of the bigger yikes moments of the night for me. But two things I want to say about this. First of all, we don't have more time to wait. We have 11 years to act according to the IPCC's deadline. The climate doesn't care about whatever political limitations we may or may not have. If we don't act, we will be looking at catastrophic levels of climate change. Second of all, the Green New Deal does not ban air travel. That is something that is not true. It doesn't do that. Now, what he's probably referring to is an FAQ piece put out by AOC's team that jokingly said, since we can't ban farting cows and ban air travel, we need to do X, meaning reduce our carbon footprint in these other areas and in other industries in order to get to net zero. It doesn't say we should ban air travel. That's not feasible, obviously. Now, again, I expected Andrew Yang to know better, but essentially he was duped by the right-wing propaganda machine who wants you to believe that AOC's Green New Deal is trying to ban burgers and ban cows and ban air travel and now the new line is that bernie sanders plan is super expensive but they don't tell you conveniently that bernie sanders plan even if it costs 16 trillion dollars it's an investment so it'll pay for itself within 15 years they don't want to say that so to have andrew yang fall for that propaganda is incredibly disappointing, but I don't want to be too hard on him because he did make other fantastic points throughout the night, and I just wish that his town hall was after Elizabeth Warren's so he could have heard her make the point that she made that I'm about to show you, where she says all of this misinformation that's spread by right-wing outlets, it's exactly what the fossil fuel industry wants. But understand, this is exactly what the fossil fuel industry hopes we're all talking about. <laughs> that's what they want us to talk about. This is your problem. They want to be able to stir up a lot of controversy around your light bulbs, around your straws, and around your cheeseburgers. When 70% of the pollution of the carbon that we're throwing into the air comes from three industries. So that was a really important point. The fossil fuel industry literally has a vested interest in making sure that whatever information that is out there about the Green New Deal you know, it, it sounds bad. It seems awful. It seems like you have to drastically transform your way of life when that's not actually the case. We can actually restructure our economy and invest in clean, green, renewable technology and save the planet that way. But they want you to think that it's terrible. So it's really important that leaders, political leaders, don't get duped by the right wing misinformation and right-wing propaganda. So kudos to Elizabeth Warren there. I think she did a good job with her 
climate change town hall. I will say this, though. I do wish that she expressed maybe a little bit more openness to the idea of challenging capitalism directly. Because if you truly want to be strong and be the strongest when taking on these fossil fuel giants, you shouldn't take anything off the table. But when she was asked the question about potentially nationalizing these fossil fuel companies, she absolutely shut that down and didn't even really express any intention of entertaining that idea. And it was disappointing. Uh, Bernie Sanders has endorsed the idea of the public ownership of utilities, arguing that we can't adequately solve this crisis without removing the profit motive from the distribution of essential needs like energy. As president, would you be willing to call out capitalism in this way and advocate for the public ownership of our utilities? Gosh, you know, I'm not sure that that's what gets you to the solution. Um, I'm perfectly willing to take on giant corporations. I think I've been known to do that once or twice. But for me, I think the way we get there is we just say, sorry guys, but by 2035, you're done. You're not gonna be using any more carbon-based fuels. That that gets us to the right place. And if somebody wants to make a profit from building better solar panels and generating better battery storage, I'm not opposed to that. So that was disappointing. And it's one of the reasons why I support Bernie Sanders over Elizabeth Warren, because she herself said that she's a capitalist to her core. And I don't like that. I am not a capitalist. And I don't expect someone to say I am a democratic socialist in the sense that I want to abolish capitalism. Even Bernie doesn't say that. But I want you to at least express a level of open mindedness, at least when it comes to the issue of climate change. So, you know, that was disappointing, although I will say it was helpful in highlighting a key difference between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, which I think is really important because if this comes down to a three way race between Bernie, Warren and Biden, you know, for someone who's not really politically savvy, who doesn't engage in politics and follow news as closely as you do or I do, it's going to be difficult for us to show them the differences between Bernie and Warren. So whatever we can take or find, we should take and use. Um, however, I don't want to be too down on Warren. I don't want to be too down on Yang. The person who I absolutely want to be down on is the person who was utterly exposed as a fraud at this climate change town hall and that is joe biden who was asked why we should take what he says seriously why we should trust him if he's in bed with the same executives that are destroying the planet for short-term profits watch this question that he was asked and i truly hope that people in mainstream media the pundits specifically pay attention and they ask politicians this question more often because this is exactly what we need how can we trust you to hold these corporations and executives accountable for their crimes against humanity when we know that tomorrow you are holding a high dollar fundraiser hosted by Andrew Goldman, a fossil fuel executive? He is not a fossil fuel executive, I'm told. He, he, he is not a fossil fuel executive. And the fact of the matter is that uh, what we talk about is what are we going to do about those corporations? What have we done? And along, everywhere along the way, for example, I've argued and we've and pushed for us suing those executives who are engaged in pollution, those companies. Who are... So let me just say to that person, that brave individual who challenged a person in power or who's running to be, you know, a very powerful person. Kudos to you. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to speak truth to power. But that's exactly what we need. Joe Biden is attending fundraiser after fundraiser under after fundraiser. So the fact that this isn't coming up more in mainstream media really shows that the media is failing to do its job. Now, of course, Joe Biden had no way to persuasively respond to that. So he just denied. He said, um, actually, Andrew Goldman isn't a fossil fuel executive. No, actually, you're wrong, because according to The Intercept's Akila Lacey, she writes, Andrew Goldman is a co-founder of Western LNG, a natural gas production company based in Houston, Texas, and he is co-hosting one of two high-dollar fundraisers Biden will attend in New York on Thursday. So Biden was lying right there. And then when he tried to answer his question, you could tell he started going in one direction and then mid-sentence he switched gears and went in a different direction. And then he said, well, you know, I'm proposing that we can sue these executives. Right, but you're not addressing the crux of the question. The question is, why should we trust that you are going to allow us to do that 
if you're in bed with these fossil fuel executives? He didn't have an answer. But thankfully, Anderson Cooper surprisingly followed up uh, and fact-checked Joe Biden and let him know, actually, Andrew Goldman is, in fact, a fossil fuel executive. So what Andrew is saying is, if you're going to a fundraiser that's given in part by this guy who has a company that is uh, pulling up natural gas, are you the right guy to go after this? Well, I didn't realize he does that. I was told if you look at the SEC filings, he's not listed as one of those executives. That's what we look at, the SEC filings. Who are those executives? I've kept that pledge, period. So is that, are you going to look at that fundraiser tomorrow night? Or I'm going to look you... at what you just told me and find out if that's accurate. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Uh that was absolutely cringeworthy. Joe Biden, I mean, if I had to predict whatever way he would respond to a follow-up, that's exactly what I expected would happen. I mean, he played dumb. Feigned ignorance. Okay. This is why you're going down in the polls. This is why we don't trust you. And that fundraiser, we'll see. By the time you see this video, we'll know if he attended that or not. Now he has that information. And he said there, you know, if it is true, it is, that Andrew Goldman is linked to the fossil fuel industry, I don't want his help. Okay, we'll see. But if I had to guess, you're going to that fundraiser. Now, I really hope that you prove me wrong. I hope that I can come out here and say I stand corrected. But when it comes to Joe Biden, I have pretty much been expecting the worst because he's the worst in this field. He's not just the worst when it comes to policy, but he's the least electable. And, you know, what I was pleased to see was that that wasn't the only instance where Joe Biden's corruption and corporatism was called out because there was another attendee who asked, you know, the same thing pretty much. Older generations have continued to fail our generation by repeatedly choosing money and power over our lives and our futures. So how can we trust you to put us, the future, but over the wants of large corporations and wealthy individuals. Because I've never done it. I've never made that choice my whole career. Simple. Sure, Jan. Whenever I see a corporate Democrat be put on the spot and their corruption uh, and neoliberalism gets called out, it just, it warms my heart. There's something about it that just puts a big goofy smile on my face. So this was such a fantastic event. You know, the DNC didn't have a climate change debate, which is disgraceful and shame on them. Shame on everyone who voted that down. They should be fired. However, I will commend CNN and say, good job for doing this. Again, they weren't motivated, you know, by this concern for climate change. They were doing it because they want the ratings by hosting presidential candidates. Nonetheless, it's still important. So, with that being said, I want to leave you on a positive note, and I want to share a clip from Bernie Sanders, who said something that was incredibly poignant, and he put everything into perspective, and it just, every time I hear him speak, he goes up in my book and he demonstrates why he's the real deal and why he's going to fight for us. This is what he said about climate change, and this, this hit a nerve with me, and I hope that it hit a nerve with people who are watching as well. Nobody in this room, just think about it, 30 years from now, wants to look your kid or your grandchild in the eye and have that child say to you, you know, Grandpa, you knew, you knew back in 2020, 2019, what the scientists were saying. You didn't do anything, and look what you created. Look at the world that you gave me. That is not anything that I want anybody in this room or in this country to have to face.